greatest and biggest innovations of that release was the GraphQL wire adapter. I think you have had a session at Apex Hours about this, but I will give you a quick overview. So first of all, the GraphQL wire adapter sends query to the Salesforce GraphQL API. The Salesforce GraphQL API was released before the wire adapter, okay? Like uh, two releases uh, before, I believe. And the GraphQL API is a new API that we built because uh, we wanted like a new, very performant way to retrieve records, especially for building UIs and for Lightning Web Components. Um, and GraphQL is not something that Salesforce has invented. It's something that has been there uh, from, for some time, from 2015, and it was really created by Facebook. So why did Facebook create the GraphQL API specification? Because you know how the Facebook mobile app works, right? You go there and you start taking a look at uh, your feed and you need to retrieve so the app needs to retrieve information from your friends and what they are posting and so on. And you start scrolling and you start like uh, retrieving more and more data, correct? So they wanted to create like a new way of doing things, a new way of retrieving data from the backend that was very performant for that specific use case. And that's why they decided to create this API. The most important takeaway or thing to remember from the GraphQL API is that there is a single endpoint to which you send your queries and it is the client, the one that builds the query. So it, the story changes a little bit because so far, if you wanted to create a query in Salesforce, the query needed to be created in Apex. Then you needed to expose a method that was doing that query. And then you needed to query Apex to retrieve that information. There were some alternatives, which are the wire adapters, like the wire rest adapters, which are the ones that have been available for some time but they are not super flexible. There are not many available and they allow you to retrieve records, for instance, in a specific way or update records in a specific way, but you cannot like build your queries or your DML operations in the way that you want. However, with the GraphQL wire adapter and the GraphQL API, we're going to see that this is possible. In addition, it has a lot of benefits. For instance, it is schema driven, which means that there is an endpoint that you can reach uh, to to get like uh, information about the data model that's behind the API. So for instance, um, if you ask, uh, give me the S objects that are available, it's with a different syntax and naming, but there is an endpoint that allows you to basically do that. It's like an object describe in Salesforce, and that um, allows customers and developers to create tooling because that tooling can like discover by querying the API what's behind the API. And also is widely adopted in the third party developer community. So as I mentioned, the GraphQL API was made GA in winter 23. And what we have uh, made GA in winter 24 is the GraphQL wire adapter. So something to bear in mind, the GraphQL API as of today allows you to perform queries and also mutations. Mutations are operations that modify the database, such as create, update, or delete. But mutations is in beta, and that's on the API. But the GraphQL wire adapter only supports queries, not mutations, for now, okay? That will come in the future. Um, so what's the GraphQL wire adapter? 
it's an adapter that you can use in LWC to retrieve data through the GraphQL API to retrieve records, to get records. Um, it has many uh, benefits because, first of all, in, in, query, in GraphQL queries, you can uh, combine queries to multiple objects and send everything in a single server uh, si uh, servant round trip. So send everything in a single request so you retrieve the data in a single server round trip, which makes it very efficient. Now I guess you understand more the Facebook use case. Also, um, the wire adapter has been built on top of the Lightning Data Service cache. And that cache is the same one that the wire uh, REST adapters use. This means that if, for instance, you retrieve a record with the get record wire adapter, which is one of the old ones, that record is going to be stored in the cache. And then if in a later moment, you try to retrieve the same record with the GraphQL wire adapter, the record may still be in the cache and may be retrieved from there. So it's very, very efficient. And also it's been designed with the mobile offline use case in mind. This is because it works with the Lightning Data Service Cache. When you are working uh, for mobile uh, on mobile offline use cases, when you lose network connectivity, if your records are in the cache, you are going to still continue be able to work with, working with them. Um, this is just a comparison of the different methods through which you can retrieve data in a WC as of today. Okay, Apex is like the most basic one. It's a lot, it allows you for a lot of customization, but at the same time, you it's you need to code a lot. To, to get an Apex method exposed and you need to, I mean, you spoke an, an Apex method and, and probably the next time that you need to perform a different query, you need to create a new method and expose it as well. So it's kind of hard to make something um, very scalable, right? With just Apex. Then with the LDS REST wire adapters, which are get record, update record, and so on, this improved because you don't need to write Apex code, but at the same time, we don't have much flexibility because we can only get record, update record, get a subject info, and a few more things. However, with the GraphQL wire adapter, the client can write the queries that it needs to retrieve the data from the server without Apex and with all the flexibility. So it's it's very, very useful. And also, okay, and the synchronization capabilities that the Lightning Data Service Cache has uh, only apply to wire adapters, okay? Although I'm thinking that you can actually cache Apex, uh, request. So this no is not correct. Okay, I will change it. Uh, yeah, and something else. The GraphQL syntax has uh, some benefits over SOQL. Um, the GraphQL syntax has uh, advanced capabilities such as directives and fragments that allow you to reuse your queries or chunks of your queries in other queries and allow you to give you a lot of flexibility. At the same time, the way in which it does pagination is also better. Well, there are many, many benefits. I recommend you, if you're interested in this topic, to watch the video that I'm going to leave you here because it's a full one hour session in which I talked solely about the GraphQL wire adapter and, or the GraphQL. It was only the GraphQL API, I believe, by that time. But I explained all those features and it's very interesting. Um, 
Okay, so let's take a look at some examples. And again, here we are in our face, famous LWC recipes app. Great, so here we have uh, some recipes that explain many of the GraphQL API capabilities and they are all implemented using the wire adapter. I'm going to show you the code for this one so that you understand one reason because of which I think GraphQL is so powerful. So here we are seeing accounts and contacts, correct? So if we take a look at the code, it is only one query, what we are doing here. Okay, we are doing a query that retrieves accounts and retrieves contacts. And these accounts and contacts are unrelated. They don't have any relationship. But because we can chain queries or combine queries in a single uh, request, this is very efficient because we just send a request to the backend, to the GraphQL API, and it returns all the information that I need, okay? The information is going to be returned in a JSON object that you need to traverse. Um, we can, for instance, we can um, test our queries in a GraphQL API client. This is one of them, for instance. Let me clear this result. Uh, I don't know if this is going to work because maybe my authorization has expired, but let me try it out. Oh, it didn't work. Um, I think this maybe I copied something incorrectly. Let me review that. No, it is okay. Let me do something here. I'm going to try to get a new API token. And I'm going to try to use it here. OK, now it's working. It was the API token. So when you execute your query, this is what the GraphQL API is going to return this is structure. This is JSON object. And then you can traverse that JSON object in your code and use it in your HTML file as normally. Um, there are some questions on the chat window. Uh, so first, Kevin is asking about uh, beta features. Yeah, so mutations are in beta. So Salesforce recommends to not use beta features in production because they may change simply because of that. So maybe you adopt the technology, you are using it in production, and then we slightly change the implementation and that has a cost on you, an impact on you. That's why we recommend to test them out and to play with them, but not use them in production or use them at your own risk, okay? And then Rahul has another uh, question about the query limit. What is the query limit and data retrieval limit for GraphQL wire adapter? Will this impact API limit? So basically, all the limits that you have in SQL are going to apply. Because behind the scenes, GraphQL is doing some SQL queries. So when that request, I arrives to the backend, it's being processed and transformed in a way that at the end is doing queries. And those queries are counting towards your limits. And, and yeah, the API limit count. Well, the API limit, I'm not sure. Let me take a look at it. Uh, GraphQL wire adapter and limits. Let me take a look at the documentation. Uh, 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 uh. It's, it's more the GraphQL 
API limit, lim, no. I think they should count because you are you are reaching out an API, okay? So they should count. In any case, investigate this a little further because, okay. Yeah, we found it. GraphQL API uses the same API limits as other connect API limits. Uh, GraphQL limits are still evolving and can change in a future release. Okay, so there you have the response. Um, could you recommend any tools specially designed for generating GraphQL schema schemas for Salesforce? Yeah, the one that I mentioned, Alter. Okay, so Alter is able to use introspection to um, find the uh, data model that you have in your Salesforce organization. At the moment, it's not working because there is a bug. There is a bug open that the team is trying to fix so that you know. But here, you should be able to see your data model and be able to build your query, like taking a look at those at those um, objects and fields. So I recommend you to use this client and also you can use GraphQL, it's another client, and you can use Postman. In Postman, we have a collection that contains thousands of examples of how to use the different Salesforce APIs. And we do have examples for GraphQL, okay? These ones, introspections, are the ones that are going to return your uh, object schema. And these ones are examples of query records once you know your object schema. GraphQL is also a very popular one in the third party developer community. Um, okay. And this was a question from Kevin and somebody has a really similar question. Okay. Uh, Sombi is also saying that you expect a SQL to GraphQL converted type tool. That would be amazing. I recommend you any ideas that you have like this one, put them in the idea exchange because that is also something that our product managers take a look at. In every release and they prioritize their features also based in the idea exchange. So I recommend you put in your, your suggestion there. And then Erin is asking, in the example, we can see we retrieve account and contacts. That's this count at two queries. It counts at two, as two SQL queries because behind the scenes, the GraphQL API engine is doing two queries, okay? But they arrive fast to your client because they, arrive in one server round trip only. That's 